Yay, that's what we like to hear. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to Food as Medicine Healthy Holiday Hacks, sponsored by Black Veg Society and presented by True Self Total Health. That's me. Um, kudos for taking time to invest in you and your health and wellness. As always, as always, my commitment to you is to provide you with a content-rich presentation in a format that is easy to understand and interactive. I also know how frustrating it can be to get really great information, but not know how to implement it. That's why there's going to be tools and resources, a Q&A, and a food demo to guide you and give you a jump start or maybe a restart if you actually need that. So, oops, and that's one of our errors, number one. <laughs> um, a few housekeeping uh, issues. We're going to answer questions at the end of the presentation because we want to keep a good flow. You can post your questions in the chat as we go along or ask to speak by using the raised hand icon at the end of the presentation. Everyone is asked to remain muted to eliminate distraction during the presentation. We also invite you, if you're so inclined, to complete a very short survey um, at the end of the webinar. Everyone who completes the survey will also receive a free 12-month vegetarian journal subscription. Stay to the end, and you're going to receive a link for immediate access to healthy holiday hacks with tips that are separated into three sections to give you strategies before, during, and after your holiday parties and meals. Immediately following the presentation, Chef Karen Osborne will be doing a food demo and sharing her favorite healthy holiday party recipes. Um, and finally, everyone who registered will be eligible to participate in a raffle drawing to win or receive immediate download access to a healthy vegetarian recipe starter guide with breakfast, lunch, dinner, and juice recipes. I usually do that raffle within seven days and you'll be notified via email. So lots of valuable information to show our appreciation for you investing your, your um, time to learn and hopefully implement some life-changing information. And maybe we can learn a little bit from you. Food is medicine. If you've been to um, one, more, one or more of these webinars, you know this is what I always show, that food is medicine. The beauty of food is medicine is the next choice to heal and promote health can begin as soon as the next meal. So food is either nourishing the body or breaking it down. What you eat is either improving your health and wellness or depleting it. There's no neutral effect. So real, whole, minimally processed food, not food-like substances, provides nutrients to support our mental and physical health. Nutrient deficiencies and insufficiencies are the root cause of disease, discomfort, and dissatisfaction with how you look and feel. It can impact the functioning of every system in the body. So nutrition, along with other lifestyle practices, will give you a conventional medicine just can't, a way to get well, not just feel better. And I hope that you all want to get well. Let's talk a little bit about me again. My name is Tony St. Clair Fish, and I am super excited to be your host for this webinar. I do these every month. I'm a board certified health and wellness coach. I'm a, a functional medicine certified health coach. I'm a nutritional endocrinology coach and educator, a personal and professional development coach, a raw food chef and instructor, and a yoga instructor. Uh, just a little bit about me. Um, I've been the proud owner of CEO and CEO of True Self Total Health for about 12 years, assisting and guiding people who have forgotten or maybe never learned how to stay healthy and balanced in their minds, bodies, and spirits. So among other things, I help people to, to detoxify their minds and bodies, learn how to eat healthy foods, and improve their overall health and wellness. I'm also a behavioral change expert, so I help my clients bridge the gap between where they want to be and where they are um, by guiding them to understanding what's in the way. I'm also a functional health and wellness coach and healthcare team member for Capital Integrative Health in Bethesda, Maryland. My background in training and education just means I'm qualified to do this presentation um, so that you guys can know that you're in safe hands with reliable information. As always, I have to give you a disclaimer to keep you safe. So there are two things I want you to hear regarding that disclaimer. The presentation is meant to be educational only. It's a sharing of information based on my experience and training or the experience of experts I rely on, like Karen. Um, it is not intended as medical advice. I am not treating, curing, diagnosing any condition or illness. So if you have a condition that requires medical attention, Please seek it. Don't um, use this for medical attention. Um, and I ask that you, if you do seek medical attention, make sure you're, you're um, uh, sharing uh, what you're doing with a qualified healthcare practitioner, especially if you're taking medications or you have a chronic condition. Just want to keep you all safe. Let's talk about what you're going to learn or what I hope you'll learn. Top five simple strategies 
to use before, during, and after holiday parties and meals so you can stay healthy, happy, and energized. You'll learn how to swap plant-based whole food ingredients to create healthier versions of your holiday favorites and how to prepare simple and delicious plant-based holiday party foods with Chef Karen O. She'll be doing a demo. It's going to be so much fun. So I hope you stay tuned in to enjoy that. Let's talk about those five um, tips. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you want to make sure you prepare before you go to the event. Tip number one, plan ahead. Fail to plan, plan to fail. Be sure to plan before you attend any holiday party or gathering. Gathering. So I always say, find out what's going to be served. If possible, ask the host what kinds of foods and drinks will be served so you'll know ahead of time how to prepare. Maybe bring a dish to your holiday party. I love doing that. Don't be afraid to call ahead and offer to bring a healthier plate to share with the other guests. It's not being rude. It's taking care of yourself so you can spend your energy on having a good time and not worrying about how you feel after you eat. And I'm hoping that Karen will share some holiday party treats with you that you'll be inclined to make. My experience with this has been that I, as much as I plan to take enough for everybody to eat, most people are, gravitate towards what I um, take to a party. So most people are going to be very curious. And uh, because plant-based food is, can be prepared in a way that's delicious and nutritious, they're not going to be turned off by it, um, even if you bring it raw. <laughs> Let's see. Um, you want to pack a healthy snack. Healthy. Emphasis on healthy. Don't show up hungry. Always eat at least a small meal before you go to a dinner party. So if you show up starving, you're going to end up just wolfing down everything in sight. I've done that. So try one of the following protein-rich mini meals to tide you over and keep you from pigging out on sugar because that's what you're going to gravitate towards. I love um, sprouted raw nuts and seeds or dairy-free yogurt with berries or a smoothie with a scoop of protein powder, um, maybe a cup of soup, uh, a healthy whole food protein bar, or uh, a coconut wrap um, with guacamole and sprouts, or maybe even celery with nut butter. So those are very simple things you can do so you don't show up hungry and end up eating everything in sight. So then while you're there, super important to hydrate. This is um, a really great tip because I found that when I show up at events um, thirsty, um, I'm going to end up eating more than I need to because the body is calling on thirst. So if you're super hungry at an event, focusing on drinking water before you go uh, for that plate of food uh, will sometimes um, help you answer that call instead of hunger. Because it's not really hunger, it's actually thirst. So if you're finding yourself craving sugar and salt, and many people do during the holidays, your body is likely depleted in minerals. So order a tall glass of water with lemon while you're out to replenish yourself. Um, if you're toasting the holiday with a glass of bubbly or red wine, alcoholic beverages, make sure to drink a glass of water before and after, after your beverages um, so that you can stay hydrated and maybe, maybe not have a um, alcoholic hangover the next day. Another awesome option is to make a healthy vitamin water drink and drink it before you head out and maybe the morning after. Uh, I've showed the recipe here on the screen. So the vitamin water recipe is eight ounces of coconut water, one teaspoon of raw apple cider vinegar, two inch piece of ginger and juice from just one lemon. Then you want to stir, shake the ingredients to combine and sip. The raw apple cider vinegar is going to help enhance your digestive enzymes, which is always a good thing to have in your body to break down foods. It's going to balance your pH um, to make you more alkaline. And the uh, coconut water is going to mineralize your body along with the lemon. While you're drinking that, practice being present and calm. Maybe take five deep breaths. Deep breathing, deep breathing calms your nervous system and reduce the stress levels naturally, and maybe will allow you to make food choices that are not from stress, but from calm and intuition. Okay. Tip number three, while you're there, still at the holiday function, say no most of the time. <laughs> so the key to staying healthy and feeling good, both physically and mentally during the holidays is to avoid eating everything in sight. We're all human. There's no way we're going to make it through an entire month of parties and holiday treats and say no to every single item. I mean, some people can, um, but most of us can't. That kind of extreme mentality is what gives us, um, leaves us feeling emotionally deprived and ready to go home after the holiday party and overeat because deprivation, the more you deprive, the more you want it. So the last thing um, 
that you want us to be frustrated with deprivation and you show up to a party and say, I'm just going to eat everything. How many of you have experienced that? Almost, almost every one of you, I'm sure. So I always practice the 80-20 rule. Focus on eating healthy, nourishing foods 80% of the time when you're out. And this gives you some leeway to indulge the other 20% of the time, hopefully without feeling guilty. That way you don't have all or nothing, right? And that's where the deprivation comes into play. And then with that 20%, you may be able to stay within the boundaries of not overeating, um, not getting bloated, um, not feeling tired. So um, the 80-20 rule has worked for many of my clients. All right. You're still there and you're still wanting to eat healthy. Tip number four, take a taste, all right? So when you decide to have that slice of pie or a helping of stuffing, focus on savoring the food instead of inhaling it. Moderation and paying attention to portion sizes goes a long way to keeping us healthy and feeling good. Now, how if your relationship with food is less than healthy and you struggle with that, many of my clients do, I recommend the work of Jeanan, I think it's Jeanan Roth, G-E-N-E-N, -E -E Roth. Um, Another tip is checking with yourself before you eat. We very rarely just take a few moments to determine how to eat um, intuitively, right? Just what do I really want? I think someone in the chat said that earlier that she eats whatever her body calls. So just take a few minutes to turn inward. Ask yourself, have I filled myself up with self-care today? Have I slowed down to address any emotions? And if you're feeling stressed or anxious or overwhelmed, just take a few moments to do some deep breathing. Maybe excuse yourself and go to the restroom if you need to step away. Take time to touch base with your body and slow down. It's going to help prevent overeating. Maybe ask about healthy options if you didn't bring yours. Don't be afraid to talk with the party host, the waiter, or your coworkers about healthy plant-based foods for your holiday events. You might feel a little nervous about speaking up, like what do they think, but you're, you're not being a pain. You're, you're being mindful of taking care of yourself and setting the stage for success. Slow down and enjoy your food. If you want a taste of something, then do it, but slow down and really enjoy it. Maybe take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to 10, 20 chews, not just one and swallow. Make sure your body registers that you tasted something, that you got that decadent flavor. Taste the food you're eating and don't feel guilty about it. And then finally, savor the moment, savor the moment. Remember that a truly healthy, happy holiday is about being present for the moment. As you're celebrating, practice mindfulness. Practice mindfulness. Okay. Now, this is after the fact. You've done the holiday parties, you've done the eating, you've implemented maybe some of the tips, but not all of them. And you have you have uh, you you de -blo you need to de bloat and reset. That's okay. So regardless of best intentions, you can still feel bloated, tired, and less than amazing once the party's over. So it's important to have some healthy tricks in the toolbox to nip that those gross symptoms in the bud and to get us back on track to feeling great. So um, you want to focus on flushing out toxins out of your bodies to reduce acidic waste that leads to bloating, fatigue, and throwing your pH balance off. So. Um, I like a morning lemon elixir, uh, two cups of room temperature water and add the juice from one half a lemon and a pinch of cayenne. That's a really good one. And then um, an evening alkalizing chlorophyll drink. You add one tablespoon of chlorophyll to 12 ounces of water uh, with the juice of one lemon and drink. And you can buy chlorophyll at any natural food store or on Amazon. So it's not something that you're gonna have to um, um, worry about finding uh, easily. And then you want to move your body. Exercise is one of the best ways to cleanse your body and remove toxins. You don't have to um, do anything extreme. Just take a brisk walk, maybe taking a yoga flow class, maybe um, going to the gym for a little bit or your favorite Zumba class. The idea is to sweat um, to help eliminate those, or, um, those toxins through the skin. And you might want to dry brush your skin and shower when you're done. Now, the last thing you want to do, finally, you're still not feeling 100%, is you want to do a four-day post-holiday healthy reset. Again, I've, I've done this for many of my clients, and they were able to reset some of them in as few as two days. But uh, a four-day reset has everything you need to cleanse and revitalize after a party event or the entire holiday season. So if you stay until the end, you're going to get a link 
um, to immediately download the Healthy Holiday Hacks um, Survival Guide that includes all these tips that I'm just sharing with you, including the recipes for the elixirs and, um, and also a four-day reset that has breakfast, lunch, and dinner recipes for your four-day reset. And then finally, you want if you're preparing holiday foods at home, you want to make sure that you stay as plant slanted as you can or as healthy as you can. And plant slanting is to me um, the healthiest. So we're just gonna, if you can't see this uh, food swap list, don't worry about it. Um, I it will be in your guide or in your resources list. So let's just take like, take a look at a couple of these. Um, so cheese is a big deal. I know people love cheese. It's highly addictive. I don't know what is in it that makes everybody crave it. Um, but a good swap is nutritional yeast or avocado puree. A better one is store-bought nut cheese or Parmesan style, um, hard or creamy cheese. And then the best is homemade nut or seed cheese. It's much easier than you think. And uh, if you have any questions about that, Karen can probably share that with you. Um, many of you um, are gluten intolerant. So instead of uh, using bread or tortilla or pita, you can buy store-bought store paleo wraps or raw wraps or dehydrated breads. It's good. Better would be homemade flax or chia wraps. And best would be just using lettuce leaf or um, bell pepper halves or jicama slice. And if you've been to any of these um, Food is Medicine webinars where Karen has worked with us. She's shown us amazing ways to make sandwiches uh, with some uh, unique um, veggie options. So I'm not going to spend too much more time in that because I really want all the time to be sent, spent um, with the Q&A. But this is just to give you food for thought, no pun intended, when you're ready to prepare healthier versions of your holiday recipes. So we've gotten to the end of this portion of the program so we can spend more time with Q&A and um, having Karen share her recipes. But I just want to remind you that before we move into the Q&A um, about the fabulous resources that you have access to, and that includes the food is medicine, nutrition, food demo with recipes. If you forgot to download it, um, I will um, share that in the chat in the resources document. Uh, you're going to get the Healthy Holiday Hack Survival Guide and Food Swap list free just for showing up and staying until the end. So that will also be in the resources guide. And then we invite you to go to our BBS YouTube channel. If you're new to Food as Medicine uh, webinars, we've got like, I don't know, two or three years worth of webinars that cover a lot of areas that may be of interest to you. And then um, a vegan journal. If you... Um, if you complete a survey by 5 p.m. tomorrow, and again, this will all be in the resources document, then you will get access to a free 12 month subscription. And it is hard copy, so uh, it's not digital. So you will need to give us your email address, I mean, your um, home address, or wherever you want it sent around the street, uh, around the corner, or to P.O. box uh, to let us know where you want that sent. And we're going to stop the share. Got one more slide. So do we have any questions or just about the tips? Does anybody have any questions about the tips? Anything new to you? Anything that, of the tips that you heard, uh, which of those tips seems um, most likely you'll be able to incorporate with any ease? Let me see. Let me go. Let's see if I can. So chlorophyll is a, a liquid from a plant. Um, so Aditi says that she's going to hydrate. Absolutely. I think hydration is so more important than uh, anything else because um, many people make poor choices when they're dehydrated. Many people um, lose energy, aren't able to digest food properly if you're not hydrated. So no matter how well you eat for the holidays, if you're dehydrated, um, you're not going to digest well. Uh, see, Aditi says, I can apply to this to any point in time, not just the holidays. Absolutely. And Terry says, the bloating tips are very helpful. I, you know, my best bloating tip really is chew your food, chew your food, chew your food, and you'll find, um, you'll find that it's going to make a huge difference. Let's see. All right. Any more questions in that area or comments? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pronounce your name correctly. Ayanawa, 
Inua, let's see. Hi, it's Ainoa. You're fine. Ainoa. Oh, thank you for typing and let me know because I hate messing up people's names. And that's beautiful. It's certainly yeah, it's all right. Thank you. Then the way I pronounced it. Cheers. Um, you say you exercise but barely sweat. So try and sweat more. Yeah, so there are many ways you can sweat. You can get in the sauna um, um, and see if that helps. But unless you have some medical condition that prevents you from, from sweating, and then you may have to see a uh, physician about that. Uh, why coconut water? Coconut water is full of minerals um, and it's uh, it help, your, your cells can um, attach to it better because it's it's more ionized than regular water. Um, yes, brilliant. I like the sauna. Not just weird. I don't know what you mean by not just weird. <laughs> um, Lisa says weight training makes you sweat. It can. Absolutely. You're not weird. No, you're not weird. <laughs> um, all of us have... Um, imperfections and we do the best we can with them let's see my mother doesn't um doesn't sweat and she was prone to pass out a lot in the summer because she didn't have a good cooling system uh let's see slowing down terry says slowing down is something i will use as a takeaway i do so i so need to do this appetizer hours quick and i feel rushed i need to be aware of slowing down yes 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 slowing down here's what i will tell you your body um, is equipped with um, signs and signals to say, to tell you what to do to eat intuitively, but we bypass that when we don't slow down, when we don't sit and breathe in appreciation for what's about to happen, when we don't eat with our entire senses, our smell and taste and eyes and all that. So the body can tell you what feels good, what looks good. So you can maybe not eat emotionally because you're in calm, or maybe you can recognize that you're eating emotionally and make a good, better, best choice instead of feeling guilty about it. So I love that. Uh, Babita says, what, what if you want to taste everything? Taste everything. Use the 80-20 rule. Taste everything. Yeah, we don't want anybody want shame, blame, or guilt around the food because sometimes it's not what you eat, but how you feel about it that will change your autonomic nervous system um, from parasympathetic to sympathetic, which shuts off your digestion because you've, you've told the body that you're in distress and the body is smart. If you're in distress, well, you don't need to digest food. You need to run. And so if you have a healthy outlook and say, you know what, I'm going to taste and I'm going to stop when I feel full or I feel satisfied. If you're aware of it, then you're going to digest the food better. And guess what? You may be able to stop because you're being conscious and aware of that. You're so welcome, Babita. Yeah, I just don't want you guys to feel guilty. So Terry says she's going to do smaller portions. Um, she really tries to do this, a sliver versus a slice. How does that work for you, Terry? Do you find that you're more satisfied or do you still, does it still leave you deprived? I'd be curious about that. You're very satisfied. Awesome. Because you're not deprived. So you think that it, it's because you are giving yourself permission to eat that you don't feel dissatisfied or there's no deprivation kicking in. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Anybody else want to share what um, what they learned or anything they were confused about? And don't worry about having to memorize. Uh, you're Italian, you love food. You know what, Terry? I don't think the Italians um, have cornered the market on that. <laughs> I, think, I think food is meant to be pleasurable, right? That's That's how it was designed so that we would keep eating. But I understand what you're saying. Um, yes. Yes, and we all celebrate around food and um, and food has its place, but we don't have to sacrifice our health um, and still enjoy the food. So Babita says, try Indian. We adore food. See there? I'm telling you, everybody's going to say that. Everybody, No matter what your culture, we love food. I have not heard a, a, a culture yet that says they don't like food or that food is not something they adore um, because food is meant to be pleasurable. Yeah. Not something that to feel guilty about. Any other comments or questions before I turn over? Food is love. Oh, I love that. But I want to be aware of my health at the same time. Absolutely. You want to eat food that you love that loves you back. And that's the problem. <laughs> Sometimes we eat food that doesn't love us back. And it almost tells us immediately. All right. So, um, yeah, just eat food that loves you back or eat in a way that feels like love and not deprivation so that your autonomic nervous system isn't impacted by the stress that you're saying. I mean, I, 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 my client said that they have sat and just agonized over eating a piece of chocolate and then ended up eating it and having digestive issues um, versus 
giving her permission to say, well, don't just say a prayer, get your autonomic nervous system into parasympathetic and just say, I'm going to enjoy this and everything changed for her. Um, Terry says, plant-based eating has been wonderful for me, less bloating, weight control. That it, it is good for that. It really is. And I'm so glad that you've experienced that as a positive. Um, that is wonderful. How long have you been plant-based, Terry? What is the YouTube channel? I'm going to um, put that in the resources uh, document and it'll have links for that. So no worry about it. Um, one year. Congratulations on your year. I, I wish you many, many more. And if you're ever having any questions about your um, plant-based um, journey, please feel free to reach out to me so I can support you. And that's all of you. If you have any questions about either um, being more plant slantish or introducing more plants. Um, the idea is not just to introduce plant eating, but to do it in a way that's healthy. So some people introduce plant-based food that is really junk food, uh, plant-based eating. And that's not what I want for any of you. Lisa says, wow, 10 years vegan and still learning. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 And as your body's going through all these transitions, and then you, you're having to learn to eat a vegan that is um, going through those transitions with you, particularly as females. Um, yeah. Babita says, wow, 10 years. We're all impressed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're still learning. I really like how humble you are. Um, Terry says, I first did process plant-based. My blood pressure went up. Yep. That's what I've heard. I've heard people that um, went plant-based and ate a bunch of junk food. Their um, blood sugar went up blood pressure went up, weight went up. Yep. And now you cook on your own now. Absolutely perfect. And again, I, you know, I, I always say do the 80, 20 rule. If you're going to eat a little process, make it as clean as possible. You don't want a whole bunch of ingredients that you can't understand, even though it says it's plant-based. Um, it may have been more processed in a plant than actually plant-based. So be aware of that, but I'm so glad you cook on your own now. I love my food more than anybody else's. I take my food everywhere, unless it's Karen's house, because Karen is a great cook. Um, then I don't take my food to her house. Um, a great chef. Okay. Well, I think we have fully explored that and everybody had a chance to address the holiday tips. So um, we're going to move on. If you have any questions that you wish you'd ask, I'll be monitoring the chat um, when Karen uh, pops in. So... Um, Yes, let me just introduce her really quickly so she can um, spend the rest of the time chatting with you guys. Um, chef Karen O, my favorite chef, friend, and colleague. Um, she's a gourmet chef and instructor and a registered yoga instructor. She specializes in considering individual health conditions and taking the best from many different theories to determine what will deliciously bring vibrant health to the individual. Now, some of the modalities she has studied include raw and vegan, Ayurvedic and macrobiotic and low fat, high carb, high fat, low carb, low glycemic, and her favorite, whole food, plant-based, no oil. Uh, Karen also teaches gentle yoga classes that are safe for bones and joints and stimulate bone formation. She also teaches yoga for overcoming anxiety and stress. So she's an extremely talented and accomplished person. And I hope that you um, enjoy her. So I'm going to stop the share. You guys and Karen, uh, you can go ahead and pin yourself. Do okay. I need to pin uh, the... I can spotlight. Yeah. Yep, spotlight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Tony. Uh, of course. Um, I I was just gonna gonna pop in about one of those comments. A slice. I mean, like a sliver, not a slice. I love that. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> uh, most foods. Like they look so great and you take your first bite and oh, it's delicious. And then you eat a little bit more and it's still good. But like the more you keep eating and it's like so-so. Yeah. Most things, not everything. Like yes. the jalapeno poppers that we're going to make, not that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm just going to make a few uh, like finger foods that you can take to parties or serve at your own parties. And one of them is jalapeno poppers. So we're gonna start with, and then I'm gonna do stuffed mushrooms. And then um, some like deviled potatoes, like people make deviled eggs. Mm -hmm. But even though we're gonna start with the, do the jalapeno poppers, I wanna get the poppers and the mushrooms in the oven so they'll be done by the time we're done here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start by water sauteing some onions. I'm just gonna put 
put my screen down so you can see it. While you're doing that, I'm going to post the resources document that has everything we need in case anybody wants to download the recipes while she's cool. chatting. Okay, go right. for it, Karen. So I've heated the skillet and I'm just going to, so the way you know it's hot enough is if you, I don't know if you can see that, but the water beads up on the skillet. Um, and then you can put your onions on and you just want to keep them moving. And I'm making a third of the recipe so we can just get them done quickly. Um, but I'm just going to water saute. So no oil. We're going to kind of let it brown, keep it moving around. Let it brown, keep it moving around. <laughs> yeah. So if they start sticking, you can put some water in there just a little bit at a time. Like maybe a tablespoon or two. But I just want to get this going so it can it can be getting soft. So Kim, what's the benefit again? I may have missed that of water sauteing versus oil. I'm sorry, I'm gonna turn my volume up. Yeah. What's the benefit of water sauteing versus oil? Yeah, uh, especially when oil is like wasted calories. And it gunks up your cells so that the like the so insulin is like the key that unlocks. Sorry, I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in here. So it won't stick and turn it down. But it it so you want the sugar out of your bloodstream. When you eat, sugar goes into your bloodstream and you want it to get into the cells to give you energy, right? And if those the the locks are gunked up with oil, then the insulin can't get this the sugar out of your bloodstream into your cells. So it stays in your bloodstream and, and spikes and causes all kinds of problems. Like insulin just it's insulin resistance. It's it can go on to diabetes, it can cause retinal damage. Uh, weight gain, all kinds of things, artery damage. Yeah. Hey, can you see there's kind of, they're brown without oil here. Yes, they look like they're caramelized. That's yeah. nice. And I'm gonna put the garlic in and really, um, you wanna just cook it, like garlic burns faster. So you wanna just cook it about another minute. And then I have, the mushrooms that I have washed. And do you know, like if you put your mushrooms in the sun, gill side up, it um, produces vitamin D in your mushrooms. So what I'm doing, I'm just taking the, the stems out and I'm gonna put them in here with the, the onions and garlic. So it's gonna be part of my filling. Okay, yeah. how long do you have to have the mushrooms um, exposed to the sun for them to absorb the vitamin D? Yeah, uh, like 15 minutes. That's all? It, I just put them out there um, till I'm ready for them. I'll just put them out there <laughs> and, them, and then when I need them, I'll go get them. Wow. So, yeah, but I've read things like 15 minutes and then a couple, two, three hours, but um, a lot of things I've read said 15 minutes. At least, so if you're all in a hurry, at least 15 minutes, if it's in the sun, you're good to go. That's a great tip. Yeah, because it's like you don't get a lot of vitamin D food. Um, okay, so I have my um, mushrooms, stems. What types of mushrooms are those? Or, These know? are just the white button mushrooms. That's all they had where I was shopping. Um, but you could use any mushroom, like the cremini mushrooms are just the white button mushrooms uh, grown a little bit longer. Or, but you want something you can stuff. So yes. shiitakes probably wouldn't be good. Mm. Okay. What's your favorite um, mushroom and why? Me? Mm -hmm. Oh, I like the shiitake because there's a lot of B vitamin B. They're really good for you. Mm. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna put these, there's B, B5, B6. 
So instead of a multivitamin, if you, um, assuming people don't have any allergic reactions to mushrooms, if you eat sufficient amount of mushrooms, you don't have to spend a lot of needless money on uh, supplements that um, have, may not absorb properly. Right. They are more bioavailable than supplements. The vitamins. Yes. All right. So I'm just going to let them cook while we do the cheese. So we're going to make sun cheese. And if you watch the one, the show where we did the sushi sandwich, it's the same cheese. Yes. I think and that was in September. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. But I'm just going to make it really quick. So I've soaked some sunflower seeds. You can soak them four hours to overnight. And when you soak them, it just removes the enzyme inhibitors. So like nuts and seeds have enzyme inhibitors. That when you um, have them in your pantry, they don't sprout. And they don't, like when they're in the ground and they get wet, like rain or watering things, then it's like safe for them to grow. So enzyme inhibitors are a little bit bitter. So I think soaked tastes better, but they also digest better. Mm -hmm. So I did soak them. I'm just going to put them in the blender. This is so easy, this cheese. And it's so good. Every party I've taken these to, they just disappear. And I've catered things. This last month, a couple of different parties took them to both both of those. And they were gone. <laughs> Not surprised. Everybody loves cheese. And what a what of a wonderful way to um um to eat cheese that loves you back. Um <laughs> so we're going to put let's see, I've got a quarter cup of well, I'm not gonna tell you how much because I'm only doing half of the half of the recipe here. So I, it's in the rest in the guide, but I'm putting the water in. I just don't want to confuse. Probably already have. I just want to remind everybody to the resources document link has been put in the chat and I will, um, I will post it again. Let's see if you need it, if you haven't downloaded it yet. Okay, so we put in um, just the water. I'm going to put in some lemon juice. And then we're going to put in some homemade vinegar. And this is the brine left over from the, when they brine the, they ferment the Japanese plums. Oh, my favorite. You introduced me to that. <laughs> it's, it's more salty than um, sour and it's alkalizing. So it's really good for you. So, so Babita asked a question. How long do soak seeds last if you want to, to use them to sprinkle on a salad? And do you need to dry them first? And then how do you store them? So it's a three-part question. <laughs> My favorite, you don't have to, but they do not They do last longer. If, if you have a dehydrator, mm. you soak them and then dehydrate them and they're crunchy again, like, you know, but they taste even better than if you just took them out of the package. And um, you, what I like to do is, to, you know, get a gallon uh, Ziploc bag, freezer bag. Mm -hmm. and just soak a whole bunch of nuts or seed, you know, different ones, but, and put them in their own bags, like soak them, dehydrate them and put them in their bags and keep them in the freezer. And they seem to keep like forever. I, I've noticed that too. Now for, for people, well, before I move into my story, um, Lisa asked, can I get that in England? I don't know what that you're talking about. Maybe the, the, um, Maybe. the could, Amazon would probably be able to, do you think? Probably. Um, it's like a, a, they import it from Japan. So I imagine it's everywhere. Yep. That makes sense. Um, well, oh. Terry, I, thank you for being, um, thank you for letting me know you were able to uh, email the resources to yourself. Appreciate your creativity and determination. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. And so a little bit of garlic, you know, go ahead. A little bit of garlic. Yeah. Powder? Big powder or granules, it doesn't matter, either one. I, I like to use granules because they're they taste a little stronger. Like they don't lose, they're they're less processed. Like the powder is just ground down even more than this. 
And so this to me tastes more like garlic, more flavor. More intense. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. And that's it. Then we're gonna blend it up. And when you blend it, uh, you wanna blend it until it gets thick. So it starts out kind of watery, but um, it will get thick, just keep blending it. So I'm gonna mute myself while I do that. Okay. So I will share with everyone. So there's always a good, better, best approach when it comes to the um, sprouted seeds and nuts. If you go to a health food store, one you trust, I go to a local one, uh, my organic market, um, it's family run and owned. And I know that they um, they make sure that when they soak and dehydrate their nuts and seeds, they put dates on them. So uh, you'll know how fresh they are. Uh, but if I have forgotten to dehydrate or soak, um, soak my nuts and seeds, I rely on them. Um, so there's always a good, better, best approach um, to it. Now with nuts and seeds, whether dehydrated, whether soaked and dehydrated, or no matter how you eat them, it's important to chew, chew, chew nuts and seeds. Um, it can be difficult to digest even um, when you, when you soak them, even though it makes it easier to digest, it doesn't mean that you can't, you, you're not supposed to chew your food. Um, so uh, you'll know it's not digested if you look at what comes out in the end and you see pieces, <laughs> then it wasn't digested properly. All right. That looks good, Karen. Very creamy. So Babita says, I don't have a dehydrator. You know, many people don't. Um, depending on what type of oven you have, Karen can share with you some ways to get around that. Yeah, if you you can put them on a cookie sheet in the oven at the lowest lowest temperature. Yeah, and just watch them because they'll burn faster than you know. They'll get done faster than in the, in the dehydrator. Um, mm -hmm. see if you can see how nice and thick and smooth this cheese. Uh oh, there you go. Can you see it? That looks amazing, yes. Now we have our cheese. Um, I'm going to move the flavor. Lisa says lush. <laughs> and Karen, you're sending message, Karen Holstein, Holstein, you're sending message to me direct, but it looks like you meant to share with the public. So you might want to change your setting unless you want to send me a direct message. Um, I'm just putting more water in here because I want, I'm not ready to use it yet. So Karen, change your direct message to everyone so everyone can see your notes because I think this is what you wanted everyone to see, everyone in the meeting. She says, wish I could taste it. Anna <laughs> says, wow, that's creamy. Looks real nice. Lisa says, lush. Yes. <laughs> and yes, I mean, the cheese recipe is in the link. If you, uh, one of those uh, links says Karen O's demo. And you just click on that and you're gonna have the recipe. Okay, so then I took jalapenos and just cleaned them out with a spoon. I, so I, I cut off the end, I'll show you one. Um, go. So I'm cutting off the end, stem end. And then you just want to look and see, you know, which way it's gonna sit flattest and then cut it down the center. So jalapeno peppers are not for the weak. <laughs> you know, if, I, if you're doing a lot, you can work hard. All right, but so if you take out the, the veins and the seeds, they're not spicy. They're okay, that's where, that's where all the- A little bit of kick. Fire is, mm-hmm. Karen says she wears gloves, Claire and Holstein. Yeah, I feel you. There's yeah. nothing worse than putting your fingers to your eyes after touching one of those. Well, yeah, for one party I did, I had like 100 uh, jalapenos to do, which made like 200 um, poppers. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have gloves on, and my hands started burning. <laughs> what if I do it, it needs to be okay. okay. My favorite way to use a jalapeno pepper, just a tiny little bit of it is if I want to introduce a little spice to a juice or, yes. or a smoothie, a yeah. little bit goes a long way. Right. 
or a salad yeah. dressing. Yes. You could actually put it in a cheese and use the cheese for something else, like a dip. Yep. Yeah. So you all know the old saying, hot in, hot out, right? So um, <laughs> be, be conscious of that. All right. So then we're just going to, I'm going to bring over my cookie sheet. I've lined a cookie sheet with parchment paper. And I'm going to put the peppers and the mushrooms on this cookie sheet. I love parchment paper. It is the, the best thing made since I don't know what. It makes cleanup a lot easier, right? It does. It does. And it makes things easier to cook without oil because they don't stick. Doesn't stick, absolutely. And then you can get the non-bleached. Right. So, yep. Which is even better for you. So then all I'm going to do is stuff them. Yum. Oops. Um, Tony, you said we are <laughs> informal. <laughs> yeah, we're very informal here. <laughs> it, it it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be it'll be fun. And I want to remind you, Karen. Um, I know you have a couple more recipes. Uh, it's twelve fifty one. I know you have to skedaddle at exactly one fifteen. Okay. I just want to keep you on track. Yeah, I just want to get these in the oven. Of course. Um, do you add anything? I mean, I didn't look at the recipe. Do you put anything else on top for garnish or color? Yeah, I think I'll just do this many right now yeah. and get the mushrooms in it too so we can cook them real quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to sprinkle them with smoked paprika, which gives Oh, yeah, paprika gives it a nice color. Color and flavor. Yeah. I don't know if this is off camera or what. Oh, I can see it. They can see them. Mm -hmm. And then I have some chives. You could use chives or green onions. This is from my garden. Oh, yum. Sprinkle them on top. Now, who would not want to eat that? I'm just saying. Take that to a holiday party. Bake them and then the peppers get soft. You could dehydrate it if you wanted to keep them raw. So um, I'm going to put a few mushrooms on my tray. Lisa says she feels like we need a scratch and sniff screen. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> Mushrooms here. Um, I'll move this for one second. All right. So the next things that we're going to put in there, I have some walnuts. Good source of omega three fatty acids mm. and some parsley. And you can put salt and pepper in there. Um, I didn't, so remember there's onions and garlic already and I didn't put, I'm not using any salt because these sun-dried tomatoes are salty. They are extremely. Like I usually buy the non, the salt-free. Mm -hmm. What I had. I did not know there was such a thing. I'll have to look that up. Well, if you have a natural grocer there, they have the best organic, Sun dried tomatoes in bulk. Um, mm -hmm. They're already packaged up, but it's their bulk section and they don't have salt. It's just tomato. I mean, this is not just a little bit of salt. This is like a salt lick. This one? <laughs> yeah, when they, those, those tomatoes sometimes, I'm like, wow, I feel like yeah. I need to rinse them. <laughs> so I did pour out a lot, you know, but they're still. Well, Lisa says, I love salt probably too much. Mm -hmm. Well, if it loves you back, we are okay with that. <laughs> your blood pressure can tolerate it and you're getting your salt um, most naturally, not iodized um, um, processed salt, then salt on. Well, actually like pink Himalayan salt or sea salt actually has some minerals in it. Yep. Absolutely. A little bit more water in here. Start out. Like normally I wouldn't, if I wasn't making that cheese, I wouldn't have like cooked that that long. Mm -hmm. I love the many colors. Um, and that's really, you know, we eat with our eyes first, right? Look, look at how more ap much more appetizing that is and appealing with the green and the red from the tomato. And every color has a different nutrient. It does. Um, so we're just gonna 
turn this off. Bring my that's what Deanna Minich says. You know, if you eat the rainbow, you don't have to worry about what nutrients you're getting. If you make sure you're getting your full spectrum of colors every day. Ah, there she has it in the bag. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that, that burner is too hot to move. Uh oh. Yep. Okay. Careful. I'm just going to get a spoon. Take your time and do what you need to do to stay safe. I got it. Okay. So I'm not going to be your sous chef. <laughs> I need a sous chef. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to fill the mushrooms and put them on our parchment paper. That's so easy, Karen. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not complicated at all. And it's kind of elegant. <laughs> it is kind of elegant. It actually is. It's really tasty. So what we're going to do then is just top uh, sprinkle some nutritional yeast on top, which is you know going to give it like a little cheesy flavor. Yum. And bake them. Do you have a particular type of nutritional yeast that you prefer over others? I do I like any that are not fortified, non-fortified. Non-fortified. Okay. And has one S A R I, and I've got Nutrilicious. Um. Just going to the whisk so they stop cooking. And here's my nutrient. And then the uh, Foods Alive has one that's not fortified. The fortified ones have like synthetic vitamins and they kind of taste more like vitamins. So just yeah. grab a little bit and sprinkle it on top. And then put these in the oven. And we'll make the potatoes. All right. Easy peasy, guys. No excuses. So who, which of these recipes are you all going to try that you've seen so far? Which one is screaming at you? Got to try that. Both. So Lisa says both. Awesome. Um, Jade says she's going to do the mushrooms because that speaks to her. Davida says, yep, mushrooms for sure. Mushrooms for the win. Mushrooms. Uh, Terry says he's going to try it all for Thanksgiving. Awesome. Those, pop, those hot peanut poppers are <laughs> so good. Um, yeah. Be brave and courageous. I, right. I have a food processor up here. And what I've done is just, I bought a can of beans. You can make them from scratch. But I just bought one can of white beans. Any kind of white beans will do. And um, what we're doing, so the recipe says red, small red potatoes, but they didn't have any. So I got these and they are, um, I think it's going to be even prettier. But, so it looks like, like deviled eggs, but they're like deviled, deviled potatoes. Um, I don't think I've ever seen those before. They're, with this color, there's anthocyanins. Um, these are even healthier. Oh, they're purplish. Yes. I, you probably can't see. Let me see. Yeah, you just have to. Oh, there you are. Yep, that's it. So I'm just going to cut, and I, I'm going to do probably one or however much we have time for. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to cut. Wow. Like, so they look like little pieces of of an egg, half of a hard boiled egg, and then you can use a spoon or a knife. Or I have this little scoop, and. I'm just going to scoop out a little bit of the potato from each half. Looks like it came out fairly cleanly. I mean, it's not hard, hard. Oh, I'll tell you. I uh, Thank you. <laughs> I um, steam them for 20 minutes okay. and, and then put them in cold water to keep them from, you know, getting too soft. Nice. Thank you for that tip. It's great. I thought well, that looked easy <laughs> it's just a raw potato <laughs> I don't go around and get one <laughs> okay so. and so that's what our little egg will be and then I put the white beans in here and we're just going to dump everything else in okay so it's a half a teaspoon of garlic granules so you pretty much would have to have a food processor to do this, correct? Karen, there's no 
plan B for that? You can just get a potato masher and put the beans in. The beans are really, really soft. Okay, so the old fashioned way. So we're not, we're, uh, we're making sure that there's nothing standing between you and doing this. Right, it's totally easy. And a lot of times I'll do something like that without, so I don't have to wash the food processor. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. So I, knife is the only utensil I want to wash, basically. All these gadgets and stuff, and I use I just use a knife. Right. And good exercise. Yeah. And lemon juice. Let's see. Yes. Lemon juice. Gonna give it that tartness. So this is like what I'm doing is gonna be more like an egg salad inside these potatoes, which is, is what I like. Oh, but wow. Deviled eggs, you know, they're just the like the egg yolks. Yeah. And you can just do this without adding in all the like I'm putting celery and red bell pepper and green onions. But you don't have to do that. That's just something I like to do. I'll put color if nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, color and nutrition. And, yeah, nutrition, yes, and texture. Yes. Yes. Because we eat with our eyes and we eat with our the chewing. All that comes into play um, and soft food, you can get that, but it, uh, most people won't choose soft foods unless there's some texture on it. So I like adding a little texture. I'm going to have a little bit of organic stone ground mustard, a little pop. What I love about Chef Karen is um, in addition to, you know, just being so awesomely trained, classically trained, um, she's a bit of a um, artist with her food too. And she's always being creative. I, every time I think I've seen the latest, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm putting turmeric in here for the color. And it's really good for anti inflammatory. Yes. Speaking of which, I've got my turmeric tea right here. Mm. And let's see. Oh. Indian black salt, maybe half a teaspoon. So uh, tell us, tell us the, the the difference between the black salt and the white salt. What what benefits are there to the Indian black salt? I, I mean, we get the egg flake, egg taste from the egg flavor. Egg, it's that sulfur, um, so it gives it that eggy flavor. Mm -hmm. But it's really, um, it's not black. It's pink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just seconds. So it's just the sulfur. Yeah, I'm just using it for the eggy taste and, the, and a little bit of salt. It's almost gone. Grace says she eats with her eyes first, and this is amazing. Oh, yeah. It, is, it looks almost powdery. Yeah, it's very, very soft. Mm -hmm. I agree, Grace. It is amazing. I think that's it. Yep. So then you would either just mash it or I'm gonna just, just process it. She's gonna put herself on mute so we don't all have. Um, there we go. Find all the parts. Okay, there we go. I can tell you, this is one recipe I'm gonna try. I was familiar with the other ones. This one I am not. And so I think this is gonna be a favorite uh, for my uh, family who is uh, not inclined to go plant slant. <laughs> but if it tastes like egg salad, they might be inclined to do it. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Grace says, yep, definitely. What's your favorite spice? Anybody put in the um, chat, what are your favorite spices? Let's see, Ann says, now when I finish my cleaning today, I'm going to be thinking of the food from the demo. Yum, you're welcome. And maybe you'll start. Um, so um, Rosemary, I think you have direct message. So make sure you put it in uh, everyone if you want everyone to see it. Cinnamon and cayenne, a cooling spice and a heating spice. That's interesting. I like rosemary too. I'm just going to... It, a lot of the tumor is on the side of the blend, the food processor. I'm going to put it down off the sides. Uh, Grace likes garlic on a daily basis, but tarragon also. 
go. It's good for critter killing. <laughs> Let's see, Valerie likes carmen, cumin, ginger, basil. Yum. Yeah, those are wonderful herbs. Different uh, profiles, though. I can see cardamom and maybe some nut milk. Davida loves basil. Yeah, basil's pretty good. Most people have a love-hate relationship with um, some of these herbs. Think about the one where everybody, some people say it tastes like soap to them. Cilantro. Pardon? Cilantro. Yeah, cilantro. I love it. I could eat it every day. So it smells like egg in here. We trust you. <laughs> oh yeah, coriander. Yeah, that's that's what it's called elsewhere. Yeah, other than the English version of it, coriander. So Karen, how did you um, discover this potato and using it this way? When did you? How did you discover it? Um. Well, I always made like, I don't know how long, for years I've made like an eggless egg salad. And um, then I just saw a, a recipe for, I think it was on pork silver knives or something, with, for using the potato. But I kind of like this egg salad better than the hummus that went in that potato. <laughs> Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's a different nutrition profile too, I would suspect, the way you do it. So did I also mention that Karen is a licensed instructor, licensed chef instructor for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And I think you every month or so, what do you all do? Somebody cooks in the kitchen? We do a, li a Facebook live cooking show where we go from kitchen to kitchen all over the world. We have one of our cooks is in Abu Dhabi right now. She actually lives in Italy. So sometimes she's in Italy, but and then we have people in sometimes cooking from Canada and from Scotland and from all different states in the United States. But we just pass it off kitchen to kitchen. Everybody, we have a theme and everybody does one recipe according to that theme. It's really fun, but here's, here's my egg salad sort of egg i'm going to move this food processor so they want to know if you have an ig page or website i'm thinking that your website is on the recipes i think it is it's myfoodfitnessandfun.com myfoodfitnessandfun.com my food fitness and fun and then i've just um chop or diced celery, red bell pepper, and then I slice some green onions. I'm just going to dump them in. And that's what makes it egg salad. Mm -hmm. and just... What are some of the themes that you've done with uh, so many cooks in the kitchen? What's like the latest theme that you all did? That looks so good, Karen. <laughs> oh my gosh. The replays. Um, on our Facebook page, it's, uh, a Facebook page is called So Many Cooks in the Kitchen, and we also have a YouTube channel where you can watch them, um, also called So Many Cooks in the Kitchen. The last one we did was So Many Sweet Potatoes. It's always so many this, so many that. Uh, we did so many potatoes once. We did so many sauces, so many um, tomatoes, so many... Uh, and any any vegetable you can think of. Uh, the next one is December. It's a Saturday. I think it's December fifth, first Saturday, and it's so many holiday treats. Ah, now you get the chance to experience Karen again. <laughs> We've done before holiday treat, but we'll have all new recipes. Let's see, um, Terry, you put Z A T A R. Is that a spice? Is that tar? Yeah, I'm unfamiliar with that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's um it's origins. It is Middle Eastern. Oh, nice. So I like to make a middle like a pizza with that. Okay, I'm gonna grab a 
plate. So now you all know many ways to experience Karen. Follow her on Instagram. Follow her on Facebook. So many cooks in the kitchen. Follow her on Facebook for her My Fitness Food and Fun. So you can catch all her wonderful um, demos. Oh my gosh, Karen, it looks delicious. I think it's even prettier with the contrast of purple and the yellow. It is. And that's a fully loaded. I mean, wow, we. And then I sprinkle a little bit of smoke. I love smoked paprika, so I'm going to just sprinkle a little. You could use, I think you could use your regular paprika or nothing. But the smoked paprika just brings a little, brings it to life. So how many people are going to try this? Uh, my hand's raised. <laughs> I'm going to try this. I'm going to grab those other things too out of the oven. They've got about six more minutes, but that's okay. We can look at them. Yep. So I want to make sure we keep you on time and on track. Everybody should have gotten the link. I'm going to post it again just to make sure that you get the link to all the resources. Take advantage of everything on there. Don't forget it to um, let us know uh, how you like this in the, in the survey so that we can keep doing these in a way that will draw more of your friends to us. Good recipe. Yes, yes. And if you all could, if you're going to give a feedback, if you could give us feedback by five o'clock tomorrow um, using that form that's in the resources document, that would be so appreciated. And in return, uh, you'll, your name will be added to the list to receive the um, vegan journal. Um, so Grace wants the assess the sandwich the sandwich edition recession, please. Okay, if you go to our Black Veg um, YouTube channel, you'll find it. I think it was September, Grace. Okay, there we go. Let's see if I can get these on here too. Hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> that looks absolutely. Who can't take that to a holiday party? No bloating, no guilt. It's not fairy food. So that doesn't mean you can eat a bazillion of them. <laughs> but you can, eat, you can eat enough and be satisfied. Yeah, you would be full. Yes, for sure. After that one, I'm already imagining being full. So Karen, in your remaining time, three minutes, what would you like to share with us? Uh, try the jalapeno poppers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared. <laughs> in there and eat them like I this one party I catered I was like serving and and this guy just kept like coming back with this just coming back and coming back and coming back and one guy was like just standing there <laughs> actually popping no <laughs> hence the name poppers enough for for how many people she had they were just gone really quick wow don't sleep on the poppers is what she's saying okay two minutes have, have a happy holiday oh and we'll see you in 2023 because we're done for the year but you can care follow karen next month i'm going to do the same thank you everybody for attending and um yeah we'll see you soon bye